Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on rational functions. Now, the function y equals 500 over x is an example of a rational function. It's non-linear. A rational function can be described by an equation in the form y equals p divided by q where p and q are polynomials, and q is not equal to 0. Our parent function, as you can see, f of x equals 1 over x. The type of graph is a hyperbola. The domain, all x's as long as x is not equal to 0, and all y's as long as y is not equal to 0. And the reason here is division by 0 is undefined. And you couldn't do in that first function 500 divided by 0. You can't do 1 divided by 0. It's undefined. So for our definition of excluded values, any values of a variable that result in a denominator of 0 must be excluded from the domain of that variable. In our first example today, we get to practice finding what excluded values are. So in our example A, y equals 3 divided by x. We're going to take our denominator, which in this case is x, and set it equal to 0. Well, here there's no extra solving, and so our answer is just x equals 0. We're going to do the same in B. We're going to take our denominator, x plus 2, and set it equal to 0. Well, if we just subtract 2 on both sides of this equation here, we get x equals negative 2. That is an excluded value for the function, since the denominator would be 0 if x was equal to negative 2. In our last example, we'll take the denominator, 2x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and now well, two steps here. Subtract 1 from both sides. 2x equals negative 1. Divide by 2 on both sides. And x equals negative 1 half. So negative 1 half is an excluded value for the function in example 1c. If x students will compete in a talent show lasting 100 minutes, the function y equals 100 over x represents the number of minutes available for each act. Graph this function. Well, our x value is going to be number of acts We can make a table coming across here for this. We could have, say, 5x. We could have 10. What about 20 or 25? Okay. Draw our table on down. And then our y value is going to be the minutes available per act. And so if you put 5 in for x, 100 divided by 5 is 20. And again, if we put 10 in for x, 100 divided by 10 is 10. Put in 20. 100 divided by 20 is 5, and 100 divided by 25 is 4. And now we can go look to graph this. On our x-axis, we could have our 
5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 acts. And then our y-axis, our number of acts, we can also count up by 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. So our y, again, is the minutes here available. And the bottom here is our number of acts. And so when we graph, we have 5 acts, 20 minutes available, 10, 10, 20 was 5, and 25 was down to 4. So this is looking like we're going to have some kind of graph that looks like with arrows here at the end. And now we get to define asymptote. And that is simply a line that a graph approaches. A rational function in the form y equals a over x minus b plus c, as long as a is not equal to 0, has a vertical asymptote at the x value that makes the denominator equal 0, x equals b. It has a horizontal asymptote at y equals c. Identify the asymptotes for each function, then graph the function. Let's first look for our vertical asymptote. For this, we're going to set our denominator equal to 0. So x is going to equal 0, and there's no extra solving here. So we can just simply draw in our line here, our dashed line, at x equals 0. And that's our vertical asymptote. What about our horizontal? Well, that is equal to our c value. And the c value is negative 4. So we can say y is going to equal negative 4. And for this graph, we're going to be counting by 2's. So we can just say this is negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. And so now my horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals negative 4, which is this line coming across here. And now I get to make a table of values to plot the points and connect. And with this being 3 divided by x, as we make our table here, let's pick in numbers that are factors or multiples of 3. So negative 6, negative 3, negative 1, we know x can't equal 0, and now we'll just go back up. 1, 3, and 6. We put in negative 6 into our function, and 3 divided by negative 6 is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half minus 4 is negative 4.5, or negative 4 and a half. If we put in negative 3, 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. Minus 4 is negative 5. If we put in negative 1, 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. Minus 4 is negative 7. Put in 1, 3 divided by 1 is 3. Minus 4 is negative 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Minus 4 is negative 3. 3 divided by 6 is 1 half. 1 half minus 4 is negative 3 and 5 tenths, negative 3 and a half. And so now we get to plot these points, negative 6 and negative 
it's going to be somewhere right here. Negative 3, negative 5 is going to be right around here. Negative 1, negative 7 is right here. 1, negative 1, right here. 3, negative 3, right about here. And 6, negative 3.5 is right about here. And so we have a decent enough picture, knowing what the shape of the graph should be, to draw in this graph approaching our asymptotes, but not touching. And this graph up here, approaching our asymptotes, but again, never touching or crossing. So as long as you get a few points in, and then bring it close to your asymptotes, you will have your functions graphed. And so as we look at example 3b, y equals 2 divided by x plus 2, we need to look for our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And for the vertical, we will set our denominator equal to 0. So x plus 2 needs to equal 0. Subtract 2 from both sides, and x equals negative 2. We can once again count by 2's on this graph, 2, 4, 6, 8 negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. So when I go to graph my vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, that's going to be right here as a dashed line at x equals negative 2. So next we have our horizontal asymptote defined. And as you can see, we're looking for the C value, but there is no C there. So there's no C, so C is 0, and so Y is going to be 0. So we can draw in our dashed line coming across here at Y equals 0. And so there is our horizontal asymptote. Next, we get to make the table of values and plot the points and connect them. So we'll make another xy table here. If we substitute in negative 4 for x, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. If we put in a negative 3 for x. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. What if I put in negative 1? Because there's no point in putting in negative 2 as negative 2 is going to come out as being undefined. If I put in negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and 2 divided by 1 is 2. And might as well put in one more, put in the zero. Zero plus two is two. Two divided by two is one. And so believe it or not, we have enough points to get the picture of our graph here. If we plot negative four, negative one, that's here. And negative three, negative two is here. And so with that, we now know that we're going to be in this lower quadrant here. And so we're going to be coming close to this asymptote, but not crossing, and then close to this asymptote, but not crossing. So we have enough points to graph this now. Draw an arrow here and have it approach these points and curve down, and then have it come close to this asymptote, but not crossing or touching. Then we have our negative 1, positive 2, which is here, and then 0, 1, which is here. And again, now we have just enough points to know what this graph is doing. We'll be coming up here close, and then down here close here. Just sketch that in. 
Draw arrow getting close and then curving on down as we get close to that asymptote. And that's all you need to do in order to graph these functions. Find a vertical and horizontal asymptote, graph those with dashed lines, and then pick a few points that are on this side over here to see whether they're going to be up here or down there. And then pick a few points on this side of the vertical asymptote to see whether they're going to be up here or down there. And so for our families of functions concept summary, we've graphed quadratic functions before, where you see these. We've had exponential functions, where they kind of just shoot up or shoot down. We've had radical functions. And now we have rational functions, where we're dealing with some of our asymptotes. And that is it for this lesson on rational functions. Good luck.